last week about Eric July. Eric July is a black libertarian who has started his own comic book company um, called Ripiverse. So he's with the blaze. I've been following his content for a while, but he would talk about comic books and how it's gone so woke. And I agree with him. In my opinion, like you have these people who have taken comic books and basically of these great iconic characters hollowed out those individuals and just now these social justice warriors are like wearing their skin <laughs> like there's a a story about the joker who was like taking people's faces or whatever like that's kind of like it's what it's like with the in the in the writer's room of like marvel and dc <laughs> they're just wearing like the skin of superman and captain america and these people but behind it is just like social justice um agendas so um i i haven't liked them for some time and Eric July has com complained about a lot on his show. And so he wanted to create his own comic book. And so uh, it hasn't been like released yet. He's doing a pre-order campaign and he's already made more than $2 million, which is pretty darn impressive. And people are so angry about it. And people have banned people from talking about it in Reddit. Like there's this big like comic books thread if you mention Ripiverse or Eric July, they they will just ban you. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> I read it, right? They'll just ban you. Um, people have said racist things to him. I've seen people post um, gifts in relation to him of that scene in Blazing Saddles. Good morning, ma'am. And isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours, sir. And I'm like, that's intense um people have said well people are only supporting eric because he's um in line with all these other like comic skate you know people and he's like the black guy who agrees with them so they're lifting him up which they don't understand that they're making an argument for eric which eric july talks a lot about how these woke comic book companies or, or just companies in general will take um these traditionally white characters and then they'll either like race swap somebody or they'll take the 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 role and then they'll have like the black person fulfill it so he'll say um you only see legitimacy in white characters now for example he'll say like sam wilson was already his own original character he was falcon and he thinks it's a downgrade for him to be captain america now when when i understand why marvel did it I'm not even saying it was a wrong decision for them to ultimately do. And Sam Wilson has been Captain America before in the comic books, and so has Bucky. And when they decided to give the shield after Endgame, which I didn't like Endgame, that was like basically the beginning of the end of the Marvel Universe, cinematic universe for me. Um, but he he gave the shield to Sam, and some people were mad he didn't give it to Bucky. My sisters were really, really mad that Captain America was retiring. I, I didn't like, that was another thing I didn't like. I'm going to go into all of that. But he gave it to Sam. And I, I I would, I actually defended it, him giving it to Sam rather than Bucky. Bucky's mind was like still crazy, right? So, but when Eric said like his comment about him, he's being downgraded. He's, because he was his original superhero. Now he's someone else. I'm like, that's very interesting. And so I had mentioned that on Twitter recently and people were just like, well, Sam can do more as Captain America because as Falcon, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, why are you guys arguing with me? Because you're you're making my point that you didn't think that Sam was legitimate enough, valuable enough um, to carry his own film, to, to save the world as this person he was before. You think he can do more with this mantle of Captain America, which was Steve's mantle. And... People were very angry arguing with me about it, but but they kept like affirming exactly what I had said. So um, it was an interesting observation with Eric, but that point, what he said about people don't find legitimacy unless like some white person like does it first, they're, they're affirming that when they're saying something like, well, he's only successful right now because these white people are lifting him up and using him and propping him up. The truth is that Eric came up with a great idea. There's a problem in the... Actually, well, I'm assuming it's a good idea. I don't. I haven't read the book yet, so I don't know if it's a good book. But he saw a need in the comic book community because there was so much woke stuff. And he's like, I'm going to build an alternative. And he decided to take the time and he's going to build his own platform. He, he built his own like crowdfunding site. So it's not technically crowd, crowdfunded. It's, it's pre-ordered. 
Um, but he didn't want like PayPal or GoFundMe or Indiegogo or what, whoever to shut him down because of his politics. Cause he's seen that before. So he's built his own platform and he did the work ground up. He's very transparent. He's like, Hey, we're, we're getting a lot more traffic than we thought. We're fixing things as we go along. But, but he was able to get like a million dollars in like a day. And he's already passed the $2 million mark. Like that's how the market works. You, you see a need and a problem and you're like, I can fix it. Again, I don't know if this product will be good. There's enough people who are willing to give it a shot because they're hungry for an alternative. On Sunday, yesterday after church, no, I'm sorry, this is Friday night after church. I was telling my sister and I write, I have different books and um, my sister's an artist. And so I just like, hey, Eric July, he he ended up making like over $2 million when he launched his like independent like comic book company. And and do you know what she did? She just like took a moment, raised her head, and was just like, God, I thank you, like, for when you do that for me. And so that just <laughs> reminds me of a big difference between like the right and the left. Because she she didn't take that moment as ah uh, that how that happened to somebody else he doesn't deserve it something like, she's like I believe that can happen for me she was inspired she wasn't a hater a lot of people who hate are they they don't see the possibilities from it they're just angry that other people and they feel like when someone else succeeds they have been robbed <laughs> there's more than enough opportunity for everyone especially in the United States. I mean, there are people who are famous in this country for, for how they put like their hair in a bun. You know, there's, there's people who have been famous because people saw news reports of them and, and then they put it in a song, like the bed intruder person, for example, um, and, and Shmoyo. You never know what's going to happen. There's a, there's a Bible verse um, that time and chance happens for them all. And are you going to be ready when it's your time and your chance? Well, we believe like in America, like there's, it's a land of opportunity. And if you have enough vision and you have enough drive that you'll be able to achieve your, your goals and your dreams. But <laughs> when, when, uh, before Trump was president, people would write all these rap songs about how they, you know, they, Trump had all this money and stuff. They want to be like Donald Trump because they, they saw how much wealth he had, so much influence he had. And he was, you know, very big on building his brand and people wanted to emulate and have something like that for themselves. They're like, Trump has his own bread. I want to go get my own bread. But with the left, it's like, no, they want you to take crumbs for people and then resent the fact that you're only getting crumbs and then demand the whole table. Like, I, I can't just take your bread. I want your cheese and your wine and everything else. That's what it's like on the left. And they really, it's like, they really, really resent success. They don't feel like if you have success that you have earned it. They feel like you have stolen it from somebody and you're not capable of building something. Remember Obama was like, you didn't build that. Like he had enough you know, goal to say that to people and to believe that. And that's why you have people who are willing to buy $10 socialist popsicles of the eat the rich. I don't know if you guys saw that. There was this um, stand, and I think it was New York selling these popsicles of like Elon Musk and, and Jeff Bezos. And he's just like, eat the rich. And you buy $10 for a popsicle to suck it to the elitist class. Well, obviously someone is, is taking advantage with their capitalistic expectations and goals and dreams. <laughs> because they're paying ten dollars for a popsicle it, it's it's really bizarre to me how much they hate eric but i'm i'm not surprised you know these are people who they believe in in really 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 taxing people and it's virtuous to it's it's more virtuous than charity right because because you might be super rich and be like you know i'm gonna give back i'm gonna give hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that's not good enough you have to be taxed <laughs> so the government can come in with like the, i guess the threat of the gun of the government right because they can do that legal and in comp or you go into jail basically if you don't pay what they want you to pay and if you don't find a way to like do some magic with your tax accountant or something you have to have your stuff confiscated and they will redistribute it the way that they see fit even though every single person is capable of, of being charitable and if everyone was charitable to some degree you could solve a lot of issues but they're like no we have to take it from these people who have an abundance and then trickle it in very very ineffective ways and they're willing they're willing to enrich other politicians like Bernie Sanders and AOC, all these people, they're willing to enrich people like that in order to achieve their goals. Like how much money that people donated to 
Beto O'Rourke or Stacey Abrams has raised a lot of money for our campaign. And most of it has come from like California and other places like that. Not people from, from Georgia, <laughs> people from across the country. And you know, a lot of people get involved in politics because they know that they can raise a lot of money. And there's like equivalents on the right that will like run in a seat, like if they, someone who ran against like AOC, for example, or in a race like that, um, they're like, I'm running against AOC. People are like, oh yeah, let's beat her. When financially, it's just not feasible how the makeup is of 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 uh the demographics of the area now people should still run in those seats i I believe in that i ran in an unwinnable seat but people who like legitimately think that someone's gonna be able to turn a seat in an election because you gave them a bunch of money that's not really how it works it would take like a some kind of weird miracle um for that to work i'm proud of what Eric has accomplished. Not because I know him. He's like, like three of my tweets. I've never had a conversation. I would like to have Eric on the show. I think that would be cool. Um, I do enjoy his content and have watched a lot of his videos. And I do really enjoy it. But the reason why people like Eric and want to support Eric is because they feel that there's a mutual respect there. As If I'm a customer, I want the person who I'm buying from to have a respect for me. I don't feel that respect from like Marvel Comics, DC Comics, and I haven't for a long time. I, I feel like they truly resent me. They resent my values. They resent my family, <laughs> the, the values that I grew up with, the values instilled within me by my father who wanted to learn how to read because his father brought him home a comic book when he was a little boy. So he wanted to go to school so he could know what his comic books were saying. Like there's a long lineage of so many hours of like conversations and and driving to comic book conventions and, and costume parties and all kinds of different stuff. Like I'm not like a, a, a normie. I'm not like a random person talking about this stuff or clicks. Like I like was ingrained in the culture before I talked politics, I talked comic books. Me and my sisters had a show called the gorgeous geeks. So, so like I'm pretty invested in it, but I, I don't feel the love for the customer from Marvel and DC. It's just resentment and they build stuff for the care for the, for the, customer they want rather than the customers that have made them rich. <laughs> and um, Eric, he's going to have to make a good product because he doesn't have the benefit of having these iconic characters that they can just hollow out and put their own garbage in. He has to actually make his own stuff. And I, I don't know how good the book will be, but people are willing to give it a try. So um, I wish him the best. The people who are angry at him and coming at him, trying to censor him and punishing people who want to just talk about him and are willing to ban them from subreddits, <laughs> which is really wild. And the more vitriol that people throw his way, the more he's going to be able to come back and, and put another dollar in his pocket. And as uh, you know, the Bible says, like, God can make the, your enemy your footstool. And I, I think that's what Eric is saying. And he's going to be able to rise higher the more of these people hate on him. So um, I would uh, say that these people should go out and create their own stuff or just support the stuff that they love. But Eric had a really good um, motto. He said, don't give more than 50% of your money to people who hate you. I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense. And I've, I've quoted that a lot on the show. <laughs> and I've encouraged people to put investor dollars into people who care for them and respect them and aren't trying to socially destroy the fabric of our society. And he says his comic books aren't going to really have that sort of political, you know, bent or anything. They're just like for entertainment. And we do need spaces where you can come together and just enjoy stuff because we're, we're losing that all the time. It was unfortunate that sports got so woke. It's unfortunate that, you know, entertainment got so woke. The, the TV shows that we watch, the books that we read, best of luck to him. I'll just leave you guys with, with this before I do my closeout. <laughs> Instead of like asking like, God, why'd you move for that person? We need to praise God and be like, if God, if you can do it for them, you can do it for me. Like that, that needs to be the attitude. You know, I have that shirt, like be better, not better. Like that's a way that people need to learn to live their lives and do not hate on other people because they have success, but just know that you too are capable of achieving that success. And I, again, I think that is a big fundamental difference between people on the right and people on the on the left. And I think that's why if people could get past their political bias, I think there's, that's why there's a lot of people um, 
black people, for example, like like Trump and, and more people could possibly like Trump because people want, they can see like a future that they want to build for their families. They want to get them out of the hood. They want to be able to take care of their families. But when they do that, they don't want to one day wake up and then more than 50% of their income is gone because some leftist white middle class person didn't want to pay for their college <laughs> or upper class, right? Because a lot of this like college loan debt is going to help like upper graduate or undergraduates or, or whatever. So that doesn't fly right with a lot of people. And we are like seeing a, a bigger like political shift, but we'll have to talk about that maybe tomorrow. Anyway, uh, again, I'm, I'm proud of Eric and I'm glad that he um, decided to do what he did. And I hope more people stand up and um, decide to keep creating content and a parallel sort of economy. So we don't have to um, feel that we have to give our money to people who despise us to, to just sit and laugh and enjoy escapism as we used to.